just months into his army service, Private Dan Cochran and his unit, the Iron Rakasans from the 101st Airborne Division, were aboard a helicopter, soaring over war-torn Vietnam towards the heart of the conflict in Dung Up Bia in the Osha Valley. Ahead of them lay a heavily fortified mountain that would soon earn the grim moniker Hamburger Hill, and their mission was to take it at any cost. Cochrane and his fellow Iron Rakasan set out toward the hill. The American offensive was welcomed by a storm of enemy fire. And during the ceaseless attacks from deep within the bushes, Cochrane and his comrades pushed on, piercing the first two bunker lines as they ascended the hill. But the enemy grew even more fierce and unpredictable, and the Iron Rakasans were soon engulfed in a series of brutal firefights that cleaved their unit and scattered them across the battlefield. Cochrane was alone with his assistant gunner, fighting back wave after wave of enemy assaults. The assistant then left to get more ammunition, leaving Cochrane by himself to continue the battle. In the heat of the fight, everything blurred into a chaotic maelstrom. When the other man returned, he frantically shook Cochrane, taking his gun away, quote, Get out of here, you're wounded. It was only then that Cochrane realized he had been hit with an AK-47 round in his right knee, and shrapnel had pierced his thighs and groin. Cochrane, determined to fight on, refused evacuation until he could no longer stand. As he was carried away from the fray, he glimpsed his unit, rallying to continue the assault. For them, the harrowing battle of Hamburger Hill had only just begun. In 1969, the military operation known as Apache Snow commenced in Vietnam's northern Osha Valley. Led by the 24th Corps, the mission aimed to eliminate North Vietnamese Army, or NVA, and Viet Cong forces gathering in the valley, block their access routes into Laos, disrupt communication lines, and destroy hidden supplies. Despite doubts from government officials and the public regarding the operation's wisdom, it was conducted deep in the jungle, far from populated areas. The Osha Valley served as a significant passage for NBA infiltration into South Vietnam, and they launched attacks on cities like Hue and Da Nang. The valley provided convenient routes for moving troops and supplies. Intelligence reports from the spring of 1969 indicated increased activity in the valley and neighboring areas in Laos. The construction of roads and trails from Laos facilitated the enemy's transportation. Evidence revealed the infiltration of three NVA regiments into Base Area 611, just west of the Osha Valley. Enemy forces had occupied Fire Base Vagel, fortified their positions, and laid mines to deter counterattacks. A captured enemy soldier confirmed their intention to advance toward Hue. Further operations in the Osha Valley confirmed the enemy's strategy to replicate their successful 1968 offensive on Hue. Facing this information, two options emerged, waiting for the enemy to strike Hue or launching a preemptive strike deep in the jungle. They chose the latter. The operation to secure the Osha Valley was a critical task assigned to the 101st Airborne Division and the 1st ARVN Division. They aimed to eliminate the enemy's presence and prevent them from withdrawing or receiving reinforcements. The 3rd Marine Division operated in the northern part of the valley to block any enemy attempts. On May 10th, the operation kicked off with a massive air mobile assault. Three battalions from the 101st Airborne Division and one battalion from the 1st ARVN Division were deployed to landing zones near the border with Laos. The objective was to catch the enemy off guard by landing close to their suspected locations. Meanwhile, Artillery units positioned themselves on the elevated ground east of the valley to provide support. Two additional ARBN battalions carried out reconnaissance and sweep operations in the surrounding areas. As the soldiers prepared for battle, they understood this would be no ordinary engagement. The sheer number of helicopters and troops in one place left them awestruck. They knew something significant was about to happen, and that the Osha Valley presented an immense challenge. When the 101st Airborne Division arrived, they encountered no immediate enemy attacks upon landing. Nevertheless, the soldiers remained vigilant, aware that enemy forces could be lurking nearby. The 3rd 187th Infantry focused on Hill 937, also known as Dung Up Bia. Lieutenant Colonel Weldon Honeycutt, the battalion commander, selected this hill based on intelligence suggesting enemy presence. The plan was to land northwest of the hill and proceed southeast toward it. On May 10th, at 8.44 a.m., the battalion initiated their combat assault into the landing zone, which was relatively clear due to prior air and artillery attacks. 
However, the surrounding area, including the densely vegetated slopes and jungle-covered Hell 937, posed challenges and forced them into a slow and difficult movement, the thick bamboo and grass obstructing visibility. Following the unopposed assault, A Company moved northwest, C Company proceeded southwest, and D Company advanced up the ridge toward Hill 937 from the southeast to gather intelligence. B Company remained as a reserve. By noon, D Company secured critical terrain on the ridge around 1,000 meters northwest of the hill. The battalion headquarters established control and support operations from this position. Later, B Company joined the battalion and continued their ascent towards Dong Up Bia. However, they encountered sniper fire, small arms fire, and rocket-propelled grenades shortly after beginning their advance. Meanwhile, A and C companies moved west toward the Laotian border, but encountered no enemy forces during the day. The next morning, the troops were ordered to climb Dong Ap Bia, expected to reach the top at 2 p.m. if everything went according to plan. Suffice it to say, it didn't. While conducting reconnaissance toward the Laotian border, A and C companies didn't encounter any enemies, but found fresh tracks on trails. Meanwhile, D Company remained as the battalion reserve, and B Company searched the area where they had encountered the enemy the previous day. As they moved towards Dong Up Bia, B Company came under sniper fire and engaged a well-prepared enemy force. The enemy utilized small arms, machine guns, RPGs, and mortars, while the 3rd 187th called in airstrikes and artillery to target suspected enemy bunkers. B Company had to temporarily withdraw to regroup, but was ordered by the battalion commander to increase their firepower and retrieve the wounded, which they accomplished. During the evacuation of casualties, a helicopter gunship accompanying the medical helicopter accidentally fired rockets into the battalion command post, resulting in casualties, including an injured battalion commander. Despite this setback, the battalion headquarters continued to function effectively, and all wounded personnel, except the battalion commander who stayed with his men, were evacuated. B Company discovered weapons, supplies, equipment, and enemy documents in the enemy bunkers, indicating a significant presence from the 29th NVA Regiment. By the 12th, Honeycutt realized that the enemy occupied Hill 937, although the force's exact size remained unknown. He decided to deploy all his companies to gather more information. A Company became the reserve, replacing D Company, while C Company changed direction and joined B Company from the east. B Company continued to engage the well-prepared enemy force, entrenched approximately 200 meters ahead. Despite heavy bombardment with airstrikes and artillery, the enemy maintained their positions. Throughout the day, the 3rd 187th faced intense fire from automatic weapons, RPGs, and mortars. Honeycutt ordered B Company to establish a helicopter landing zone to facilitate casualty evacuation and resupply. Then, the enemy struck. The enemy attack caused a helicopter, carrying an engineer squad for the landing zone construction, to crash. Later, on May 13th, B and C companies advanced toward Dong Up Bia but encountered enemy fire. Despite casualties, they continued with artillery, airstrikes, and helicopter support. The enemy, entrenched on the hill, displayed significant strength. The next day, the battalion launched a coordinated attack. B, C, and D companies engaged with heavy preparation, including artillery and airstrikes. B Company reached the top of the ridge, facing intense fire, while C Company had to pull back due to attacks from all directions. Both companies retreated to defensible positions, focusing on evacuating wounded soldiers and preparing for the night. Casualties were inflicted on the enemy, but at a grave cost. Plans were made to attack again on May 15th, with additional forces from the 1st 506th Battalion joining the 3rd 187th. A Company relieved C Company, and all three companies resumed their ascent with airstrikes and artillery support. The enemy resistance was fierce, using mines and causing casualties. A Company made progress, but B Company suffered disruptions from friendly fire. Meanwhile, the battalion headquarters was targeted, inflicting injuries. 
Thus, the commander withdrew both companies and awaited reinforcements before attempting another ground assault. The 1st 506th Battalion faced sporadic small arms fire during their slow advance. The brigade commander postponed the ground attack until they could support the 3187th from the south. The enemy demonstrated training, discipline, and proficiency in camouflage and accurate fire. The situation required re-evaluation and additional forces to secure victory. On May 16th, there were no significant contacts, so the companies prepared for the next day's attack on the ridges. Despite the continuous pounding of the hill, the enemy held their positions. The first 506th faced increasing resistance as they moved toward Hill 937. Artillery, gunships, and airstrikes were employed to suppress enemy fire. However, they would not be ready for the planned attack on the 17th, so the coordinated attack on Hill 937 was rescheduled for the 18th. Preparations were made. The 3rd 187th positioned themselves to support the main attack, and the enemy positions were bombarded day and night. By May 18th, both battalions were in position and ready. Airstrikes, artillery, and CS gas were used to soften the enemy positions. But the 3rd 187th engaged a determined enemy force and suffered heavy casualties. The attack was temporarily halted, but heavy rain and enemy resistance caused difficulties when it resumed. The decision was made to pull back to avoid unnecessary casualties. In turn, the 1st 506th initiated their attack, facing intense enemy fire. Progress was slow, and they established a defensive position by nightfall. The division commander decided to reinforce both battalions by surrounding the hill with two additional battalions. A coordinated attack was to proceed on May 20th. Through the 19th, the men prepared for the attack. The reinforcing battalions waited near Hill 937. The 3rd 187th developed attack plans and resupplied the companies. The 1st 506th continued to push up the hill, engaging in intense bunker-to-bunker -bunker fighting. By nightfall, they were within 200 meters of the hill's top. On May 20th, the coordinated attack on Hill 937 began. The 3rd 187th attacked from the southeast, with three companies side by side. Initially, they faced no opposition, but as they approached the hilltop, the enemy suddenly opened fire. Despite the resistance, the attacking companies retaliated and continued their advance with the support of artillery and mortars. Finally, minutes before noon, the first company reached the top of the hill. The enemy fought fiercely from their bunkers, but they were eventually defeated, and every bunker was destroyed. The 1st 506th Battalion attacked from the northeast and encountered small arms, RPG, and mortar fire as they made their way up the ridge. The 2nd 501st Battalion attacked from the southwest and did not encounter any enemy resistance. However, they found abandoned huts and bunker complexes left behind by retreating enemy forces. The 2nd 3rd ARVN Battalion attacked from the northwest and faced some resistance but continued their advance. By noon, the objectives of the battalions on Dangat Bia were achieved, and the enemy resistance crumbled as Allied forces pushed forward. The routed NVA soldiers fled the battlefield in panic, attempting to escape to the safety of the Laotian border. But victory came at a high cost. After 10 days and 12 attacks, Dangat Bia Mountain in Vietnam was turned into a place of intense fighting, known today as Hamburger Hill. The U.S. Army used a massive amount of firepower, including bombs, napalm, shells, and tear gas, against the North Vietnamese forces. The battle resembled the trench warfare of World War I on the Western Front. Remembered as one of the fiercest battles in the Vietnam War, the Battle of Hamburger Hill was named for the intense fighting the soldiers experienced. But the encounter had a major impact on the United States, even marking a turning point and sparking controversy among the American public. Senator Edward Kennedy criticized the battle, arguing that it caused unnecessary loss of American lives. The battle shocked the American public, who were not prepared for the high number of casualties. Many civilians believed that the fighting at Hamburger Hill was senseless and criticized the outcome. However, the soldiers who fought in the battle 
believed they were doing the right thing. As a result of the battle, the United States changed its military tactics. The Defense Department imposed strict limitations on American-led missions, despite objections from high-ranking military leaders. Shortly after the battle, President Nixon announced a new policy called Vietnamization, which aimed to reduce American involvement in the war. This meant that the South Vietnamese Army would take over combat operations, and American troops would gradually withdraw. The Battle of Hamburger Hill left a lasting impact on American history. Since the 1990s, veterans of the battle have held annual reunions at Fort Campbell, Kentucky, where they gather to honor and remember those who were lost. These gatherings provide an opportunity for veterans and current soldiers of the 3rd Battalion, 187th Infantry Regiment to connect, share their experiences, and pass on their knowledge to a new generation of soldiers.